hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Sagittarius in May 2019. Hi, Sagittarius. How are you? Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, any announcements? No. No. <laughs> Hope everything in your life is going well. As for me, I'm doing all right. <laughs> all right, Sag, I've shuffled off camera. That's your main spread there. I'm going to shuffle now for your outcome and your overall energy. Once all the cards are out and they're lying face up on the table, that is when the reading begins. You can look in the description box below if you want to hit the timestamp to jump ahead. It's totally okay with me. I put it there for a reason. <laughs> also down there is the information you need if you want to get a personal reading with me. Readings for uh, right now are $25. That's a reading similar to this six card spread, clarifiers, or cards, all that kind of stuff. It's about 45 minutes, 50 minutes long, and it is pretty cheap. Uh, I would suggest you get that reading sooner rather than later in the sake of saving you money because come June, I'm going to raise the price on that reading as well as introduce two different types of readings that I'll offer on the channel. Uh, but if you want to get my most in-depth reading for the cheapest price, I would suggest booking as soon as possible, okay? All right, Sagittarius, let's go ahead and get you an outcome for May 2019, okay? Sagittarius' is outcome in May 2019. Please show me. Outcome for Sagittarius in May 2019, please. Oh, there it is. Flip that in the middle. Bottom of the deck is the overall energy. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's happening? All right, let's flip these and see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Now we're looking on the camera. Looks pretty good. I did a pretty okay job with that. <laughs> Alright guys, let's see what's going on. Please show me Sagittarius in May 2019. Please show me Sagittarius in May. Please show me Sagittarius. Okay, here we go. Sagittarius coming into May 2019. You come in with the Four of Cups. Mm. Well, tr the traditional interpretation of this card is immediately in the forefront of my mind. It's like right in front of my face where, you know, you're despondent or, you know, you're feeling disenchanted or underwhelmed and really bored or apathetic with your either emotional state or emotional offers and opportunities that are coming towards you or just the options that are in front of you. Now, emotional meaning fulfilling, meaning satisfaction, meaning joy, happiness, etc., etc. It can be in work, it can be in love and romance, it can be, you know, with relationships with your friends, it could be within yourself. You're not you're struggling to find some type of satisfaction and happiness on your own. Um, and so there's just like a disjointed or disassociated feeling I have, whereas, you know, maybe some of you are becoming different or you're acting differently and people are kind of confused or you're confused by your own new types of behaviors or your own, um, just like there's a little bit of a, like a phantomy. Okay. It's going to sound weird, but, you know, go with me on this. You know how sometimes in, like, old sitcoms or, like, old cartoons or anything like that, there's this idea of, like, an evil twin, a.k.a., like, a doppelganger that looks exactly like one of the main characters but is evil and is out in the world doing things, like, you know, causing havoc or causing mischief. And then people look, <clears throat> excuse me, people look at the protagonist and are like, how come you robbed a bank? Why did you do that? And the protagonist is like, it wasn't me. It was them. It was this doppelganger, this, this other version of me that looks exactly like me, but they just are bad. Okay. Now I'm not saying that you're out there doing bad deeds in the world, but there's this idea that you're out talking, interacting with people, going to events, going out to work, whatever. And it feels like either to you or to other people, it feels like a different version of you is there. Like people, and maybe that's it. Like maybe you know 
Sagittarius, that you're behaving in a way that isn't natural to you, that you're behaving in a way that isn't in some way authentic or isn't in line with what is typical of you. And you're kind of feeling, maybe some of you are feeling like, you know, like I don't want to use this word because I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I am cautious of how heavy some people might take it, but some of you might feel like possessed, you know, if you want to take it to the exorcist kind of level, that's your business. I don't, I'm not connecting with it in that way, but I'm connecting with it in a way of you feel motivated to do things differently or strangely or oddly in ways that you've never done before. And it doesn't feel like you. So some of you maybe are going through the motions. Maybe some of you are wearing a mask and you're pretending to be someone that you're not for the sake of something. Maybe. What else here? So, you know, just being dissatisfied and having to, or finding yourself, not even having to, I think you're finding yourself, you know, that, that would be aligned with what I said about possession, right? Where you're there, you know, you're there, but you're not in control. Like you see your hand move, you hear the words come out of your mouth, you, f you feel yourself walking towards a certain door or towards a certain person. And in your mind, somewhere in your mind, there's a part of you that is screaming out, no, don't, or why are we doing this? Or what are we doing here? And there's this questioning, thank you, behind this. There's a deep questioning of why am I acting this way? Why are we saying these things? How come this is this way? How come I feel this way? So there's that disjointed, disassociated feeling here, okay? Other than that, going a little bit back towards what <clears throat> we traditionally um, interpret the Four of Cups to be, is that you may have asked for something, an opportunity, a certain relationship, romantic or not, um, an experience, and the offer or the package that it is arriving in is not the package that you thought it would be, okay? So a lot, oftentimes the Four of Cups, and, and it might be a little hard for you to see, so I'll, I'll bring it closer to the camera. You see how she's seated there and she, we can assume, ordered that beverage. And now that the beverage has arrived, she's kind of like, I don't want that. Or that's not what I asked for. So there's that idea here that you've worked towards something, you've asked for something, maybe of another person or maybe of the universe, whatever. You've put in an order. You've requested something. And now that it's come to you, it's either not what you expected it to be, it's not coming when you expected it to, or it just doesn't embody what you thought you wanted. So again, there's a little bit of that disassociated or disjointed, distanced feeling that I get there for you, okay? Oh, and then, right, because you're looking out and you're expecting, yes. So this could be the smaller portion of yourself, like that small voice in your head, going back to that whole being possessed or being out of control of your own body. And maybe some of you are having that, like maybe some of you are having out of body experiences, or maybe if we're, t if you want to take it the spiritual route, maybe some of you are getting in touch with your higher self. You're doing a lot of metaphysical work and you're just waking up to something and you feel a part of you is unmatched or not yet partnered with the core of yourself, something like that. But anyway, regardless of how this resonates for you, you are expectant, three of wands, expectant. Some of you might be expecting, like just because I'm using that word and that's such a strange word to, word to use, I could say some of you are waiting, some of you, you know, but I said expectant. So some of you might be pregnant or there's an issue of pregnancy within your circle, within your realm that is very significant. But it's this idea of, as you can see, looking out over the vista, looking out over the port there, the seaport, and really contemplating what's on that ship. There's yeah, just one ship, very tiny ship too, like way out there, okay? So there's this wonderment and there's this expectation and there's this consideration of what is leaving you, what are you sending out, and what's coming towards you, what, what, what are you expecting to arrive? So some of you, that could be literal things, packages, mail, exchanges of, of, of communication between you and someone else in terms of business uh, or, or workplace matters, right? But I'm getting it in a much grander sense because the coming and going of that ship or whatever ship we're talking about is crucial to you, Sagittarius, because I think you have a lot of plans. You know, that's the other thing about the Three of uh, Wands 
is it indicates we have been working towards something. We are in the midst of getting, you know, this thing up off the ground. We're in the midst or we're beginning to make progress and, 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 and steps forward. And it's all in the sake of, or excuse me, it's all hinged on accomplishment, gainful, like gaining towards something. Honor? Interesting. For some of you, this is an issue of gaining honor, gaining trust, or gaining respect. For others, it's going to be about gaining independence, gaining your own freedom in some sense. And it's a struggle because, like I said, especially since it's on top of that Four of Cups, right? It's a struggle because it might not be on your timeline, right? So you want it today or you wanted it yesterday. It's not going to be here, whatever it is. It's not going to be here for another, let's say, two to three months. Just an arbitrary number, two to three months. If you wanted something today, let's say it was an Amazon package, for God's sakes. You expect it today. Then you get an email notice or you get a notification on your phone that says, oh, your package has been delayed and it won't be expected until August. You're going to like flip a bitch. <laughs> or, you know, you're going to blow your top. Or you're going to be really sullen and, and sulky and really moody. So for some of you, this is an issue of time. And you're expecting something sooner rather than later. And now that it's coming up, it's very apparent to you that it's going to come later. Now you're just like, well, you know, you know, definitely would make you feel like dissatisfied with what your current circumstances are. Okay. So if it's not, a, obviously, if it's not a physical package, if it's not something that you've ordered on the internet, right? Plug in whatever this is. If this is a relationship, you want to get close with someone, you want to get serious with someone, or you want to maybe even break up with someone. It, uh, you know, just to run the gamut of the options here or the, or the uh, possibilities, right? If that is delayed or your expectation within the relationship has changed, right so for those who are breaking up let's just let's, let's just use that one because that's a little bit of a it's the it's the less argued point i guess if you've been wanting to separate from someone and your reasons were we don't communicate well we don't have interests the same anymore i'm not you know they do this i do that and it's just like too different we argue all the time all that kind of stuff and so maybe in preparation or just before you pull the trigger on this thing, your partner starts to act differently. They start to show actual genuine interest in what you do or the things that you like. They actually ask your opinion of things. They actually want to know what you want for dinner. You know, it's not just like they drive to wherever and, you know, here we are again, Red Lobster. And you're like, I hate Red Lobster. I don't care for these cheddar biscuits. They're not that great. You know, <laughs> Whatever it is, and so now the change in behavior from someone else, the change in circumstances and, and, and energy, I suppose, in a way, of someone else gives you this three of wands. Oh, well, I was about to break up with this guy, but now he's kind of come around and he's putting in effort and he's trying to show me how much he cares about me and he's trying to show how much he values me and respects me and loves me. I was so ready to quit this guy. And so in combination, this expectation and not having it met, having it delayed, having it, you know, take a, take a, side, a side route, something like that, in combination with your Four of Cups, it's not, what you, it, it's, it's not what you were planning on or the way in which this is unfolding isn't what you, what, what you anticipated. Hmm. That's very interesting. So... Regardless of your situation, you know, you're all going to have different experiences and not everybody wants to break up and not everybody wants to date. Some of the, some of you, if this is like a business thing or a personal develop metaphysical expansion of self kind of thing is going on for some of you. Now, what ends up happening or what has happened, I think, <sighs> hmm, hmm. I think you're having, yeah, you're having a reversal. Okay, thank you. Uh, so you guys know, or if I haven't mentioned it in your reading specifically, I've mentioned throughout the 
lifetime and the lifespan of this channel. I don't intend to read linearly, but sometimes it comes out that way. And a lot of times for my reading, the linear thing is like in a backwards way. Like I'm still going to read towards what's upcoming, but the positioning is backwards. And I think that's just a testament to how I am as a reader. I don't intend linearly. I don't like it myself, but my guides like to be like, well, here's some linear, but you're going to read it backwards. And I'm just like, okay, sure. <laughs> so that was just like a little aside because it's just like, you know, I don't intend it, but it comes out often. And maybe it comes out because that's like what you guys need to hear, the linear stuff. Anyway, so here we are expectant. Here we are dissatisfied. <sighs> and it's a challenge. It's a big time challenge. Like, and I think it's two things for you. I think you're, ex yes, okay. So here you are, suffering is how the first word that they picked up, or that they picked up, that, that I picked up when I picked up this card. Thank you, is how I'm supposed to say that. Thank you. Um, suffering, Ten of Swords. So many feel that way. So for those who are in that relationship, but you want to break up, or you're single and you want to date somebody, but, you know... A lot of fish in the sea, but a lot of those fish are, you know, not great. <laughs> you know, the dating scene can be a little, oh, can leave, it, it, it. <laughs> there's a lot to be desired in the singling, mingling world, I feel. Um, but anyway, so you're feeling really just beat up, exhausted and or frustrated and just like to the brink, to the limit of what you can take suffering right so whether you're with someone not with someone whether you're satisfied at your job or dissatisfied with your job i'm not satisfied but whether you're working or you're not working uh, whatever you're feeling the pain and the wow carnage come on that's very heavy but maybe that is a word that you know maybe there's like an emo person out there yes it is carnage <laughs> yes life is pain you know maybe some of you have that really extremist worldview right now or perspective on life and you're really in this dark and dreary space i don't know and i'm not judging but regardless <sighs> wow what what Mmm, interesting. Now they, here. Now, I said suffering and I felt it was a heavy word. And I wasn't able to articulate it. But while I've been talking this whole time, I have sensed that this is a pain that you're experiencing, but other people, again, are not really wise to it. And the thing that I was just like kind of shocked by or really struck by was they drew my attention to her face, how we can only see one eye. And it's a clear eye. Then they showed me the image of behind that tuft of hair, behind her hair there, her other eye is sobbing. Like her other eye is, she's just like crying, buckets of tears. And now, okay, the other part is that might be a black eye. That might be an eye that is, you know, which shows signs of infection or disease. So there is this pain that you're suffering with, you're saddled with something very heavy. It hurts you. You're very hurt, Sagittarius, okay? Or you're very uncomfortable. If you're not hurt, you're like severely uncomfortable with whatever we're talking about. It is just like unbearable. But most people are none the wiser. None the wiser. And so I'm drawn back to what we were talking about in the Four of Cups and that possession thing. So if you're acting in ways that are not like you, if people are saying, hey, how come you said that? Or how come you did that? Or you're sitting there thinking that about yourself. Why am I doing this? Maybe some of you like are going out and like giving into your vices. I'm not feeling that, but I'm trying to illustrate how it can manifest in your real life. So say you have always been a, a casual or social drinker. Maybe now every day after work, you're sitting home, you're having two, three, four, maybe even two entire bottles of wine, whatever. You're, you're up, you're, con you're consuming more alcohol. You're getting drunker or, or buzzed enough on a more regular occasion. And you've never done that in your life. 
and you're sitting there thinking, or your roommates or whoever are like, how come Sagittarius is drinking so much? There's a pain that's hidden from everybody else, maybe even to some degree yourself, and it's bubbling up this way. It has to be released in some form or fashion. So you're acting differently. Some of you are acting out or lashing out. Some of you are getting really mouthy or attitude with people or with yourself. Maybe you're hypercritical with yourself. Maybe before you felt really confident in yourself. Now you're feeling less confident. You're picking yourself apart. You're looking at yourself in the mirror. Oh my God, I'm so fat. Oh my God, look at my skin. Oh my God, da 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 da. And it's just like this constant judging of self. But nobody knows, even you to, this, to a certain degree, Sagittarius, what it all boils down to. I'm not really getting it here. It's going to be different for everybody. What the issue is, why you're feeling detached from yourself, why. And okay, in a cycle, I love it when they like just throw shit at me. So another aspect, and I just have a very glossy, glossy, I have a glossed over understanding of this. It's been a while since I've taken a psych course, but I feel that there was something in some of the courses that I've taken and the little bit that I understand where there's this idea of the id, the ego, and the super ego and how one of those, when they get out of balance or they kind of take control over the consciousness, that's when people act very abnormally. That's when people begin to show signs of their personality that are usually uh, controlled measured properly you know rich restrained so i think it's the id right isn't it the id so some of you your id and i could be wrong don't quote me i'm not a doctor of course but i think it's the id so some of you your id is just going ham out here and it's reaction it's it's a reaction to something psychological or something subconscious or something Again, for those doing metaphysical work, spiritual work, something that's going on in either your awakening process. Maybe some of you are having like a kundalini experience, but it's like kind of going haywire. I don't know. But something is just not, it's painful and you're suffering through it and you're being really quiet about it. Now, the other aspect of the Ten of Swords usually is talking about the end of it, you know, because Ten is a culmination point. Ten is when... You know, it's the last hoorah before we start all over with an ace, two, three, and so on and so forth, right? I think the ending or the brink energy is more in what you desire. I unfortunately don't feel that it's actually coming to a head anytime soon. So what do I mean? You want it to be over. You want to stop feeling this way. You want to understand, finally understand what's wrong with me or what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? Why am I doing these things? You, you, want, to an you want to get answers to those questions. You want to feel released from this pain, from this suffering, from... <sighs> it's really just coming off as pain and suffering. I'm trying to see if there's anything else because those are heavy concepts and those are heavy, heavy, uh, heavy hitting uh, uh, conditions, yeah? I mean, if anything, the other part could be like sadness or depression, which is are also heavy. But this is just like doldrums, like really, really tough stuff. And you want it to be over with. That's your desire in the ten. But I have to be. I have to tell you, I don't feel it's going to be there. And because you know, and okay, thank you. We've talked a little bit about the metaphysical stuff, and I briefly just a moment ago talked a bit about the psychological stuff. So maybe the issue here, let me put this down for a second. Maybe the issue here for some of you Sagittarius is that this is a chronic thing. This is a chronic mental condition or a mental disorder that you have or an emotional disorder that you have. This is a chronic or repetitive aspect of yourself in terms of relationships. Maybe you have a partner that you know is great on paper. They're fabulous. Everybody in your family or everybody in your friend circle, they love this person. Yet you back here with that four of cups find yourself bored with them. Very apathetic and just like unmoved by them. And so that to me would speak to some type of, and I hate to use this word, dysfunction in some form or fashion. And so you know you have it. 
other people don't know. You've never discussed it with your friends or your family. You've never, they've just always looked at you and you're like, oh, you know, you, you always have such great boyfriends or girlfriends, Sagittarius. You know, one day you should really marry one of them or one day you should really like settle down. And you play that game. You're like, yeah, I know. And they're so great and blah, blah, blah. But on the inside, you're just like, no, that's the worst thing I could ever do. I would never do that. So there's this avoidance, distance, and rejection of intimacy. And it might be rooted in something psychological, physiological, uh, um, emotional or behavioral uh, dysfunctions that you have that you may not have ever explored for yourself. But now you're kind of feeling like the crunch and pulled to kind of journey down that road. Okay, that's okay. I'm, I got to move on. But I hope you follow what I'm saying. And the reason I'm saying why or the reason I'm highlighting the chronic thing or the repetitive aspect of this is because you have this nine of wands and the nine of wands. Hmm, the, the illustration is much different than the traditional because this person, this female, she does not look tired. She does not look beaten or battered. She actually looks like a uh, Maleficent from uh, which, what is that? Um, Sleeping Beauty, right? But done up in a golden dress and golden uh head headgear headgear what do, you, what do you call that headdress there you go headdress so this feels more persistent you know a lot of times in the nine of wands we get tired we get fatigued we feel we're at the end of our rope and there's there's no more we can give to a situation this feels like defiance this feels like putting up a fight and I mean, that is there in the Nine of Wands too, but it's like less invigorated. It's less bold. It's less, you know, pizzazz or pow or punch behind it. This feels very punchy. So I hope none of you are out there like punching people. Okay. But there is this, you have a lot of power behind essentially sort of like a last stand a last hurrah, or having to maintain defenses, having to maintain your position. So you're, some of you are like being stubborn. Because remember, I said m most of you, if not all of you, want that damn Ten of Swords to be done. You don't want to experience this pain. You don't want to have to feel whatever you're feeling that's associated with that Ten of Swords. But you're also not wanting to there it is. That's just right. That's the stubborn thing. You, ah, okay. Let's clean that up. Hold on. So again, psychological, emotional, whatever internal issue that you're having in order to release the burden, release the pain, the suffering, you'll have to confront your demons. You'll have to confront your, your physiological conditions, your social conditioning, your lack of, or avoidance of intimacy whatever the issue is whatever is causing you to be crying behind that you know tuft of hair whatever to get to the root you have to do the work one and you have to face down not your involvement but just like how much you've been You'll have to acknowledge that to some degree you've allowed this to go on for as long as it has. If it's chronic and it's something you're born with or something that you, you know, you have no prevention of, like you, you know, it's just the way your body is made up, you can't help it. But there's something about acknowledging that you contribute to and or have a certain responsibility or carry a certain... I, I hope you get what I, I hope you get what I'm saying and you're reluctant to do that you know you're not in the mood because I feel this is mood here and definitely next door with that four of cups definitely you're just not in the mood to do that so and how is it manifesting then now you're acting out now you're saying things and doing things you wouldn't normally do you're drinking more you're sleeping more maybe maybe you're staying up late maybe you're like you know, in some self-induced insomnia to, to a certain extent, whatever. You don't want to be culpable here, but you are. You know you are. To a certain degree, you know you are. 
And for those where it's like a condition that you were born with or something that's long standing in your medical history, uh, if you were diagnosed with something years ago when you were younger, teenager, even younger, or even in your early 20s, and you were given advice on how to take care of yourself and you haven't followed that advice from a medical professional, okay. You know? It's not that it's all entirely your fault, but I feel that defensiveness. And it's weird, Sagittarius, because like you're being defensive and kind of ornery and kind of resistant to yourself. I mean, yes, it is coming in the form of other people. Like if you have a diagnosis and your mom or your dad knows and they're like, you know, you should just go and take care of that with the doctor. And you're like, mom, shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear that shit. You know, something like that. And your mom is just like, oh, God, you can't speak to me. You know, something like that. And you're sitting in the inside. I've never cursed at my mom. I've never said that. Why would I say that? There's like this weird possession, this weird doctor. There it is. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of feeling, right? Who is this person that I am turning into? Like, what? I've never in my life spoken to people like this. I've never in my life had such visceral reactions towards people who just want to help me. But you're... you're like I feel like you're angry and it's weird okay not weird but I think many people can relate to it I mean it's a common experience where you realize you've done something boneheaded or you're doing something that doesn't serve you you're you're really mucking up your chances to improve yourself right and you know that then when someone comes along and tries to highlight it to you offer you assistance, offer to be supportive of you. You know, if it's a if it's a matter, Sagittarius, of making it to your doctor's appointment, I could just drive you there. I don't mind. This is your mom or whoever talking to you. And you get mad. Someone is getting mad that people want to help them. And the anger isn't at the person who's trying to help. The anger is, look at you, Sagittarius. Look at what you've done. This person is going out of their way, being nice to you, showing support and love to you. And all you're doing is mucking it up. Like, the anger is misplaced. You're projecting it onto other people when really the anger or the dissatisfaction and, and the disappointment is really with yourself. Talks a lot here about that. But that's these three combined, I feel. The Ten of Swords, the Nine of Wands, and the Four of Cups. All that combined. The Three of Wands is not really factoring into what I just spoke about. Man, tough. So, again, this is linear. But, you know, I'm reading it reversed as far as the position. So this is where you are currently in your state of mind. I feel this is where you are currently in your emotions. Right? I think it might boil up or bubble up and become more intense as we move forward into May, even into June and July or whatever. It's going to be, especially if this is like new, like if you just recently started drinking more, you just recently started, you know, staying up, you know, two, four, five hours past your bedtime or whatever. If you just started that, it will continue. And it will continue until you reach a point, Sagittarius, where you can't do anything anymore. Mm. You can't do anything anymore. What does that mean? Like, you run the risk of alienating yourself. You run the risk of burning bridges. You run the risk of cutting off your nose to spite your face. Or to spite your face, excuse me. <laughs> And I don't know when this is meant to happen for you. Yes, thank you. <sighs> Death card. Major Arcana card for Scorpio. Uh, so there might be a Scorpio in your life of significance, but it does not have to be. Um, <sighs> uh, I did this earlier for someone. And listen, I don't do it easily. I don't do it, I don't want to do it nonchalantly, very frivolously, but this death card for someone might mean a literal death. Now, God forbid it's some, something heinous or, or tragic and just life shattering. I don't want to see that happen. And anything in tarot, let me tell you this before I even get into what I'm feeling truly. Anything in tarot is all about possibilities. It's all about what I feel what's coming through in this moment right here right now so energy flows energy ebbs and flows it changes vibration all that kind of stuff so 
do not take this as a prediction, a fact of the matter type of prediction. No, it's just the chance, okay? And you can change these energies. You can move away from them. You can avoid them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But literal death is a not a possibility, but there's this oversight, interesting oversight, or theme. Maybe like a brush with death is kind of what is a wake-up call for somebody. You know, maybe there's an intervention for those that are getting into certain behaviors that are destructive or not serving. You know, you might hit an intervention or you might be, you know, prompted to go to an intervention and you hear the story of a, a, a near-death experience of someone who's been in a similar situation. You, do you see what I mean? So that's where I'm like... I'm not feeling anybody will die, but there's this idea of kind of having a, a sharp wake up call, like cold water splashed on the face, like, you know, just like it shocks the shit out of you. Okay. Now let's get away from that, please. I don't want to be here all day with that. Cause I think some of you will, some of you would be freaked out by that. And I'm just like, don't be freaked out. I really don't feel yeah, I don't feel like anybody's dying, but I think like the prospect and the possibility or the reality that death is a damn thing that will happen and you can avoid it if you don't do this, that, or the other, that is good for some of you to experience that shock. But I don't think it's coming in the form of someone actually dies, okay? Anyway, let's move away from that. I don't, I... So yeah, change, transformation, you know, those are the standard uh, interpretations of this card. And that's kind of like what's down the road for you if, you, if you choose. You don't have to do anything in life. You don't want to do Sagittarius. We all have free will. But there's this idea of you waking up to, thank you, and realizing change and transformation. Those aren't just things that we say and they magically appear in our lives. No, you have to work towards it. You have to put in the effort. You have to show that you mean it to yourself, to other people, it doesn't matter who you're showing it to, to God, to the universe, to, to whatever, but you have to show. There must be effort put behind it, yeah? And there we go. In between, or not in between, but if you look at the line here, here's where you're called, a call to action almost with the death card. Let's change ourselves. Let's change our behavior. Let's change blah, blah, blah in our lives, yeah? On the far side, you've got that three of wands. That's the initial spark. That's that laying down of the foundation. That's the, okay, that's the intention setting. Thank you. You would intend to change. Or once you say it, you make plans. So maybe it's like, okay, I got I to gotta get in shape. I'm going to commit to going to the gym three times a week. You say that. You make a pledge to yourself, whatever. The hiccup is the pain in the middle. And you realize what you want here on the far side with that three of wands to, to, to get a gym routine. It's easy to say that, but to actually commit the time and the effort to show up to the gym, bring in your gym bag, change into your clothes, go out there, get the right playlist set up or set up your little book or your little Kindle up on the treadmill, whatever you do, whatever your ritual is, go in there, break a sweat, stay there, maybe, maybe attend a spin class. Da, 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 da. Like it takes a lot. It's not a matter of I'm just going to go to the gym and spend 30 minutes walking around and suddenly my body's going to be fit. No, I have to go in there. I actually have to lift the weights. I actually have to get on the cardio machines. I actually have to, you know, go in there and make sure I stretch and eat, eat right. And that's the other part of it. So it's more than what you say. And some of you feel, again, here's that disconnect. I can say I want that, but do I really want it because I don't want to do that? Does that make sense? So that's where that change in transformation comes from. You have to go through the the foxhole, interesting, like the trench. Thank you, that's the word, trench. You have to go through the trenches of the pain and suffering that you're going through. The self-sabotage, which is essentially what we're talking about with these two cards together, where you defeat yourself before you even start off on a journey, Sagittarius. And maybe that's the death that you need to experience. You need to experience the death of those old ways, the death of that old mindset, the death of, the, of, of, of that 
that tendency to speak a good game, but don't follow through with the, you know, you, you talk the talk, you gotta walk the walk. So you gotta put an end to that. I talk the talk, but I stay seated and I don't go anywhere. So a lot of you are able to articulate and communicate the things that you want in your life, the changes you want to see in yourself, but you don't actually put the effort in to do it. Mm -hmm. And there it is again. Wow. I wasn't even paying attention to that. That's good. <laughs> I normally don't. Right below that death card is the judgment card. So secondary card of Scorpio here. So you've got two Scorpio cards on the board. Some of you have a Scorpio that is significant. When you get two cards or double affirmation is how I like to think of it, of one particular sign, someone out there has either you have significant placements in your own chart with Scorpio. So explore that, look at that and see how it plays out for you. Others of you, it is a literal person who is a Scorpio and they're uh, significant to you. So the judgment. <laughs> and I laugh because she's like drinking a glass of wine, the woman down in the coffin. So rebirth, some like a reconciliation. Oh, there it is. The re, 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 reconnection. So remember, oh yes, here we go. Here we go. Because remember earlier when we started, Four of Cups, disjointed, disassociated, and then re, 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 over here with the judgment. Re, 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 reconnected, reconciliation, reestablished. And then, of course, the idea of resurrection. Getting back to or calling forth what was already dead and gone, what has been lost or what has been... Uh, taken away or buried or put away you know what I mean we bring that back so for you Sagittarius this is about bringing back yourself or getting back to yourself or getting back to normal getting back to some level of self-awareness and or effective consciousness what does that mean I don't know um, effective consciousness okay like again some of you have been sitting, drinking those two bottles of wine four times a week, knowing consciously it's not good for you. Knowing consciously you're only hurting yourself. So the effect of consciousness is, again, walking the walk. You know, Sagittarius, you're sitting here having a self-dialogue. -di you know, Sagittarius, as you sip the Marlowe, Marlowe, Merlot, excuse me. As you sit there sipping your fourth or fifth glass, you're like, hmm, you know this, I love the taste of this and this is great, but we're just sitting here on this couch. We're not doing anything with our lives. Like you're having this internal, like meeting powwow of different parts of yourself or different, you know, like I said, effective consciousness. There's like several, but the I suppose the most publicized version is that movie oh god what's the name of it shit I can't think of the name of it but it's a Disney Pixar movie <laughs> oh god I forget what it is but basically it's a Disney Disney Pixar movie where it's the young girl and uh, most of the movie we see her through her different like emotional side so joy uh, fear, anger, disgust, and sadness, right? I think those are, those are the five emotions. I forget the name of this movie. But those are the different aspects of this kid. And depending on who's at the control board or who's doing whatever, that is what she emotes. That is how she behaves. So if she's sad and if sadness touches the controls, the kid starts to cry. If anger or, or, or uh, gets at the helm, then she gets really fiery and, and just pissed off, right? I forget. God, I wish I remember the name of that movie because I do like it. Anyway, so that's what I'm feeling here. You're having that kind of powwow meeting. Like your emotions are sitting together at like a board or at a, at a conference table. And they're like, okay, so Sagittarius, you know, someone's pointing down at, at your impulse. So Sagittarius impulse, like how come we're drinking so much? Like this is maybe your logical side talking or your, or your, or your curious side talking. It's like, how come we're doing this? And impulse is like, you know what? I don't need this shit. I'm leaving and like gets up and storms out of the meeting. And then, you know, <laughs> sad Sagittarius emotions. It's just like, why can't we just like make this work? Why are we fighting all the time? You're having like some really disjointed consciousness. 
and you need to have effective consciousness, which is to get those different aspects of yourself to work together, okay? And that's how the resurrection happens. That's how you get back to yourself. So if that involves, you know, going and seeing a therapist, getting on medication, if that involves getting out, seeing the world, put down the bottle of wine, go take a walk somewhere, get fresh air and into your lungs and, you know, have a different perspective. If that means finally going back to way back to something we talked about earlier, if you've felt disjointed and not really known yourself and you've been acting differently while you're in a relationship with someone, get rid of the relationship. Whatever you need to do, put action behind your words, put action behind your intentions, okay? Oh, a lot of majors on the board. Also, your outcome is the Hermit card. So, Hermit card is the Major Arcana card for Virgo. Some of you have a Virgo maybe in your life, but, don't, but do not have to. This is about, you know, as you can see, she's holding that lamp in her palm there. So this card immediately indicates you got work to do. And you need to do it, not fast, but you need to do it <laughs> fairly soon. Otherwise, I think things are just going to continue down this, this rabbit hole of despair and and dis dissatisfaction and just like ornery oh, just no if you want to see things happen or see things happen if you want to see things improve you have to get in touch with this hermit card um for th for those where this is an issue where you need to see a doctor a hermit does represent that you know associated with the sign of virgo very florence nightingale kind of stuff where these people and this energy would be very healing to you would be very eye-opening in some in some cases if, it, if it's not direct healing that you're after if it's not direct you know counsel that you're looking for it would just it would at the very least open your eyes to something that needs to be addressed okay and for those who are you know avoidant of medical professionals you don't like going to doctors for whatever reason this is again a call to action for you wake yourself up heal yourself if you don't want to go see a doctor or you want alternative therapies, look them up, Google them, you know, ask around, research, do all that kind of stuff. If you, I don't know, it's just this ownness that you have here. Even if this is an external person, I feel when you get in touch with this hermit energy, there's an ownness to the trauma or the drama and the and the fractured feeling that you have within yourself i mean i think i mentioned it yeah i did i mentioned it earlier where you're culpable in this and this hermit card this person who is represented by this hermit card is going to illuminate that to you it's going to highlight that to you so hard and it becomes unavoidable the thing about the hermit is once the ball gets rolling with this energy, it's it's hard to miss what what needs to be addressed. It's hard to miss what is awry, what is not functioning correctly in your life. Okay, so we're gonna with this card, you're gonna be very you're gonna be made very well aware what the issues are if you choose to. Some of you don't want to, as we discussed before. But in your best interest, I would say you should do it. You know, just a suggestion. <laughs> Overall energy for the month of May, the Tower card. Here we go again. Uh, Tower card, major, secondary major arcana card for Aries. Oh, that's funny. And then the Emperor is right there. So, and that's, I don't usually take the card behind, but because it's there, like both of these are together, here we are again. So you might have an Aries in your life of, of significance, Sagittarius. But the tower is basically keying you into massive upheaval, massive and sudden changes that are path-altering or life-altering, okay? Mm. And it's... The aspect here is that it's unavoidable. So if you've been going through a very dark and trying period and you're just like, what the F? Why is my life like this? What is going on here? And you've been racking your brain. You've been feeling so confused and you don't know why. 
I want to say that what you're going through, for those that are experiencing that and like you're really, really, really just like unable to or confused by why it's been so trying, why it's been so difficult, why it's been such a, a pain, right? Some of you have, I hate to use this word, karma attached to something. Maybe from a previous life, maybe some, from something earlier in your life, maybe you've laid on, maybe you have invested in faulty foundations, faulty relationships and connections, and now uh, the universe is trying to rectify that situation. So for some of you, it's just unavoidable. This is destined, whatever the tower moment means to you, however that manifests or shows itself up in your, shows up in your life as, mm, can't escape it. Now... And that's for like a smaller portion of you. Like if that resonated for you, you know it. If it didn't, you're like, I don't believe in that or I don't believe in karma or I, I haven't done it. Or you know and you feel you haven't done anything to warrant, you know, quote unquote, bad karma. I, I don't want to use that word because it's not a word that I am comfortable using on my channel just yet. Anyway, but if you feel you haven't done anything that would bring that into your life, the other aspect here for you would be Like you, like this is a call, another call to action, but a different type. Like this is a quieter, more internal and almost sullen or solemn. Thank you. That's the word solemn call to action. The hermit It's very quiet. It's very demure. Okay. Undetectable sometimes. This tower card is a similar energy, but it's more ex external, okay? So this is the, I need things to change and I need them to change now. And so the universe is like, okay, I heard you. And boom, things change now. And this could talk back, or, or excuse me, link back to sort of that analogy that I was giving you earlier about the different parts of yourself at the conference table. This could also speak to your heavy use of impulse, and, and, and indulging your impulses, indulging your quick fire behavior and actions, and then this having, that having some type of consequence, okay? Yeah. Sagittarius, I am going to end the reading there. Because I think there's a potential for that to go a little more, and I'm like, mm -mm, no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> Personally, I just, I need a break. <laughs> anyway, and then that loud song comes on. That, that was perfect because I like to skip that song when I hear it. Anyway, Sagittarius, that has been your reading. If you like it, please hit the like button. If you want to leave a comment below, let me know how this resonated with you. I love to read those things and I often respond to them. Uh, you can share this video across your social media platforms. That allows the channel to grow and it gives it the exposure to different people who normally wouldn't see it. And of course, if you are not subscribed, but you want to be subscribed, well, there's a button right down below. You can just hit it. And then boom, you'll be subscribed. Make sure you hit the notification bell as well. Um, yeah, and if you do any and all of those things, it helps my channel grow. It lets YouTube and me know I'm doing a good job around here. And it, again, opens uh, or it, um, you know, allows my videos and my content to be suggested to people who normally wouldn't see it because there's a lot of tarot readers on YouTube and there's also a lot of cat videos on YouTube. So... I'm very lost in the shuffle without all of this uh, interaction with the channel. So if you do any of those things, it really helps me out, okay? Sag, I'm going to be back in a couple weeks. I'm going to do a mid-May. And then, of course, I'm going to do a June reading in about four weeks. So you have those things to look forward to. And I think I'm going to do a random, but it just hasn't hit me yet. I've been busy, you know? <sighs> so I don't know when I'm going to do a random, but at some point, it'll be up here, okay? Sag, <laughs> I thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really, really appreciate it. Take care. Bye.